fucking. Oh, uh, no, I just did. I started out. It, it's all good, man. But hey, with Squish uh, talking, like, oh, we really appreciate that. Like, she's not around the server very much. Look, this whole time I wasn't, I didn't aware that I've been smoking bowls. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, d- don't worry i i that didn't actually uh get on there so it, you're all good you're, you're not promoting any uh any inebriated uh drug use on a stream you're 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 in the clear all right cool cool why am i hearing uh, technically uh you know what you, you might not have muted it D- did you mute the stream on your end oh god oh no He's getting that double speak. What is happening? I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it's the effects of the storm. There's like yeah. three times of it playing at once, and I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It stopped. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if it stopped, it stopped. You know, you're good. You're good. I, I don't I don't know what to tell you. But hey, you know what? As long as we're not shut down tonight by the power of the hurricane that everybody has been fearing. It, dude, I, I can't walk two steps without someone uh, in my state getting all upset over a hurricane. I, I, I live in Maine. What's the, what's the name of this one? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, Lee, Lenny, uh, is, is some some <laughs> shit. <laughs> Leroy, <laughs> I, I don't fucking know. They're, they're naming they name hurricanes after everything, but that'd be fucking awesome in D and D. What what if uh, you got your players, you're doing a thing, and well, they have a big ass named storm. Like you can make the storm the big bad, and your big bad of a storm has a name. All of a sudden, you're fighting hurricanes. I mean, oh, you had to look it up. There are creatures that like can create things like that, so I don't see why not. Ah, oh, dude, I, I had my players fight a storm once. It was a sentient storm. Sentient. They were in an airship. Oh yeah, it, it was throwing boulders. It was just like gusts of wind, lightning everywhere, and they had to like steer around shit, try to mitigate damage, uh, shoot shit out of the air. It's Try to knock things away with magics. It, it, it was a wild the, time. I don't know if this is the current one. But September seventh, the hurricane's name was Margo. So, Margo? <laughs> no, there is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's the current there's one. No, there's. N- I do not think that's the current one. <laughs> All right. If we have anybody who is like a what is it, what are they called? A weatherologist? If you're one of those. A meteorologist? Yeah, you know yeah. what? Weatherologist sounds way more uh realistic. You're a I mean, wizard, oh, hey. tell us what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to the weather wizards out there cuz honestly, it, oh, w- what the fuck, dude? <laughs> it's just meteorologist. That sounds like you study meteors. Um, what do they call people that study meteors? Um, astrologists. I thought they were the ones that study like the cosmologist. Yeah, now they look this up. God damn it! We should start. Ah, the show. Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you hurricanes, monsters, news, and homebrews. I am your host, Orion. And I am your host, Sam, here to bring you some new factual stuff. Did you know that the uh, the science that deals with meteors, meteorites, and meteoroids are called meteor critics? It's kind of sick. Mm. Meteor critics, like, what do they judge them by the size of impact? Be like, okay, okay, uh, this one uh, had like a, I'd give that impact about a five out of ten. You know, it didn't really stick the landing, but it had a lot of heart. Right, and then like, Fucking... 
people who, who study like uh, like minerals and like the ge- geometry of like space rocks and stuff are called like cosmochemists and like why 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 is it not astrogeologist oh man it's all how is it not astrogeologist i don't know what i'm talking about also gnome depot just died from the call (laughs) Uh, uh, he'll be back yeah i know people are probably like who the fuck is gnome depot that is our guest for today Uh, and he will uh uh, he's back he's back ah nice Speaking he of lives. The, I live. It just the just devil. in time to introduce himself. Yeah. Speak of the gnome deep. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, my name is Mark Walton, and I'm I work at the Gnome Depot. No <laughs> correlation to Home Depot. Um, hmm. passing it, it, passing resemblance. All right. Cool. <laughs> Distant cousins. Yeah, right. So, uh, is it uh, along the same lines of like a store that you go into to buy D and D department stores? I'm on. Uh, I am on board already. Yeah. I go in there and get like a, a dwarven hammer or something. Ah, dude, I I want to throw uh, my players like uh, I had this encounter I planned for the longest time, where if my players come into the real world, like. They'll get thrown into first off, they'll be thrown into a strange area and I'll describe it in the most uh, awkward way possible. Very roundabout. They're going to be in the center of Disney World. Oh, no. Yeah. So you you can imagine how that's going to be very strange for anyone involved. Like, oh, you you see uh, the humanoids walking all around you, uh, dressed in uh, clothing that you're not quite familiar with, a foreign style with these strange uh, plate-like uh, figure, uh, th- these uh, strange plate-like contraptions attached to their heads as they're walking around. You know, like, and you just kind of like lean into that. And then you 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 see a, a dragon swooping around on on a rail with a bunch of screaming peasants, you know. But you draw your weapons, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and everyone's just kind of like walking past you. Like a, a kid tries to hug the kobold of the party, you know. You start out like that, but then uh, one thing leads to another. They get out of the Disney park once they realize where they're at. And, and if they want to go and buy stuff from the, the human world here, then they can stop by a cash for gold place at the corner of a strip mall. Cash for cash gold. In- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you go to the cash for gold, you cash in your uh, gold for cash. And then uh, also on the same strip mall, uh, in, in my mind, I plan to have a Home Depot or like a Lowe's or some shit where it's like they go in and like maybe they get to the garden section like, oh, look at this. This is an excellent price for a hammer. I don't know what the conversion rate is here. Well, normally it would be like uh, you know, so many gold, but dude, th- this is oh like God. a couple copper for a good hammer. There's no magical <laughs> enchantments on this. <laughs> Well, technically, <laughs> Dude, technically, once the barbarian gets his hands on a chainsaw, you know, oh my God. Done. <laughs> you know, I personally think a a reverse isekai oh. portal rift trip to Florida is a great way to get things going with your party. You, you throw them into Disneyland. You describe it weirdly. They go to the fucking uh, cash for gold place and then to the Home Depot that's on the same uh, lot for the strip mall. And like, you know, if you really want to like jazz things up, you could have them get into altercations with the police. Maybe uh, some uh, you know, some uh, uh, some Cubans. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, like uh, maybe they piss off uh, some uh, gangbangers or whatever. Oh, like a gang or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. With the drywallers? Just oh don't mess with the drywallers. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you, There's so many you levels don't fuck with them. Uh, also, don't fuck with the guys that do the tile. Like, th- they work really hard. <laughs> they don't take shit. No. <laughs> mm. But yeah. <laughs> And the cool thing is, if you uh, throw them into a Home Depot or a situation there, you don't really have to describe the Home Depot too much. You can. 
But the cool thing is like anything that they might want to buy there, it, they could literally just be like, oh, I, I'm going to go and buy some duct tape. <laughs> Artificer with an entire shopping cart worth of duct tape. <laughs> right, right. Oh, man. Hey. Try taking like that fantasy hey, world a knowledge, sufficiently to, like, the real advanced world technology. <laughs> a sufficiently advanced technology. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it's from that. Like, it's one of those things where it breaks the fourth wall in the so best way possible. If you take that into consideration, and that's what I take in consideration when I'm coming mm-hmm. up with my items, is that you know, True. exactly. Sure, it's Monday night and, here uh, where <laughs> I live, but I mean, uh, a chainsaw would be freaking. Uh, you know, a plus three holy avenger in the right hands. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Right. 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 That would be a, that would be a high value magic weapon at that point. Like to no, do the same just, thing. You baseball. just use alchemist fire. What do you think that? Ah, stuff shit! Is? All you have to do is keep fueling it up with like a just this buy little a gas vial stuff. Of alchemist okay. Fire and you or if you can just dump like, it into the tank, and yeah, you're good you for just another pump, week. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something, you know, like. Exactly. You, you know you what? I will absolutely you know, rule that alchemist fire replaces gasoline <laughs> in any <laughs> two-stroke engine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Although the oil would be good but to uh, keep everything kind of lubed it, up, you should WD-40 absolutely keep your chainsaws a, lubricated. A medieval society would be like. Ah, dude. Liquid <laughs> I'm, I'm loving Finally, it. Finally, your paladins will make their their stealth checks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, it's. it's I love it. Look at a, an item that you have in your house, right? It's you beautiful. Say, okay, the magic I, of WD forty. And I took it over to, uh, you know, a low tech society. And showed them mm. how to use it. How much of that would look like magic? Absolute magic. Mm. Mm. For it's not sure. Like you understand I mean, all the technology I, I'm just like looking around my right, desk right? now. Like, how many of these things are straight magical? Like, boom, sunglasses okay, right here. I mean, the right, basis so of like, imagine the economics of... of, of yeah, of I mean, the basis of like right? Right? electricity. You're a necromancer. Magic, like, what is your most valuable mm-hmm. item that you have? It, it really is. Like, dude, Bones. we managed to harness plasma and Bones, like right? in so a, a traditional fantasy setting, going, hey, it, like you need so to be brain. a high level mage <laughs> to be able to <laughs> harness lightning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, fucking lightning man i also feel it's like you know, in this money, situation they would it kind of be like i don't know they, they would feel like a, a disrespect Grandma is towards my like money. the elements you know in nature for you know for this exactly. kind of and if i'm like using it as, as i think that as could be very labor, interesting or uh corvée mm-hmm. labor Direction. as you might want to call it because like slavery is oh, absolutely well, isn't natural uh, you know <laughs> the way you use magic is wrong blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. The the ever present uh, argument that's typically thrown towards necromancy. How True. dare you bring back the dead? That dead. That's <laughs> the dad. <laughs> necromancy with daddy issues. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that your father died while you were at a tender age. The necromancer's not helping you today. Yeah, it's a uh, pufferfish. <laughs> so, Mister Gnome Depot. Uh, what his you do? his mm-hmm. mic cut out from the looks Again? of it. I, I don't God know. damn! Rest in uh, we we couldn't have iron mm-hmm. out all the issues, but we certainly did try. Oh, oh it's it's working. It's good. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Your will be able to fix it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bob, Labor. Uh, bodies. <laughs> yeah. Mm. A dime a dozen. All right. He's like, I'll buy <laughs> the corpses of your dead loved yeah. ones. Like, what are you going to do with them? Bury them? Like, mm. Give them to me instead. <laughs> Reduce, reuse, or cycle. Yeah, why not? I mean, shit. Save you the trouble of burying these people well, and just hand them over. <laughs> I... I <laughs> Mm. 
right. Well, it's, it's interesting you say it, that because there's a real life stuff, example of this. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was it's in a weird Haiti. Uh, I could <laughs> be wrong, really but movie. there is a uh, entire uh, process like. Uh, there was a guy that survived it and managed to escape. But what the these voodoo uh, witch doctor uh, dudes would do is they would find a victim and they would uh, poison them so that they're it, so that they're in a near death yeah. state. Like they it, appear it, dead. Like, every, yeah, like it's yeah. Like you have like, everyone have, thinks they're dead. You have people that so they go. That, they they have, have the funeral. Right? They're buried. That don't and have any while they're buried, they're suffering from their oxygen own. starvation. They so in that's that they causing do. brain like, damage. Well, the, necrom- yeah, the necromancer voodoo witch doctor a, uh, motherfucker pops in. He digs up the body later on that day. You have a takes the dude out. Gives him uh, whatever herbs he's got packing to get the motherfucker back but, uh, up yeah, on his I've feet. About, but uh, he's doing now this dude's brain damage, poison, an of, and uh, then you're all labor. hopped up on whatever <laughs> drugs uh, the uh, voodoo like, uh, guys well, got uh, thereafter, and then taken away to a my, little farm my, my where it, they're Let's forced see, to uh, do uh, all this labor <laughs> in a zombified vegetative okay. state. <laughs> yeah, they're basically like almost like a mind control at that point. Yeah. It is like that's how real world zombies have been done. Like I think the guy that escaped escaped in like maybe the fifties or sixties or something. Uh, I forget. Like I read it uh, years ago, but it it was. Yeah, there there is. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, the the concept (laughs) that you would just take somebody's and like it's not enough to just enslave somebody but to pacify zombify and just <laughs> eliminate the like brain damage someone like dude yeah. like it's just, it's like lobotomizing them at that point yeah if i had to ch- ch- dude uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Ooh. Oh, dear God. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm looking at the it's chat so over sweet. here let's see uh dark no, ace says hey Chris. boss uh, huggy thing. has the stream on pc3 in sorry, loss Chris. prevention <laughs> office hey shout out to- <laughs> hey oh nice. the, the gnome depot is on top well, top listen, let me dog get this right. over here if, if you did that game <laughs> do you like get to dive into the pile of gold Fuck like because like if, if, if i can't do that then i i don't want uh, that again. i make no promises to steve that we're professional in any capacity we, we try our best huey doing louis <laughs> you have fun while doing it that's what matters <laughs> exactly exactly but Speaking of other fun things, before we uh, jump into our monster for the week, I, mean, I, I did want to, I, I wanted to highlight this. <laughs> Dude, fine. there's a. Uh, you, you remember way back when we had Craig on the show and we were you, talking about just, uh, that Morgborg uh, game? It was like a TTRPG thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, the guy that created that is has made a. DuckTales RPG. Hey, I do horses. Right? DuckTales, <laughs> love it. Dude, table DuckTales uh, uh, tabletop called Duck Borg. <laughs> All right. You have my attention. <laughs> it, it basically it follows along uh, like the initial stuff that you uh, see in like uh, the uh... <laughs> Oh man! Ah, oh, Chris, Chris. Oh no! <laughs> Guess the name for now. <laughs> I feel nothing. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> do, so yeah, like, honestly, honestly have to play a duck. Do you have to be one of the kids? Like, what, well, I mean, I do like uh, that guy's I would artwork. Say, yeah. just fantastic. Uh, you get to make your uh, own character because, like, it's, it's obviously you'd be doing that. So you get to get your own character. Is, uh, uh, the DM stuff, would so it's like, probably has to take that. the painstaking time to learn to be white, Scrooge McDuck for the campaign. Just know how it works without, like, yeah, get that voice. Actually, seeing a picture. It's got to be a dick. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> oh. Uh. Too good. Too good already. Well, yeah. Uh, honestly, away. that's really good. The McCoys. <laughs> it's like, finally. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'd say anyone oh, who grew up yeah, with DuckTales, uh, it, when uh, going back to the age old advice, of, uh, if you're going to run a game, from, uh, run something you know awesome. well. <laughs> if you know DuckTales well, just run Man. a DuckTales game. <laughs> this is why for so long I've been wanting to either run or participate in like a Digimon <laughs> campaign or like the Soul Eater one. Like, <sighs> ah, dude, I, I, I want to do the Soul Eater one so bad because it's just fun. But uh, Adventure Zone, uh, are we talking about in so, the other So, any DMs out there that the, want to the run this uh, too, when they get a chance just, and the uh, Kickstarter's fully under like, uh, they have this uh, whole thing funded and everything, just uh, pretty damn not, awesome. not underfunded, underway Campaign and funded. There, there we go. Uh, <laughs> let your players dive into the mountain of gold, okay? Just, that was <laughs> sort of like, there's, there's no uh, point otherwise. I would, I would think it would be like a Stranger Things meets West Virginia. Virginia oh, yeah. meets oh, it case, is, you know. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's the setting. It's basically the setting for where they they grew up at, and so it's like they just use. Yeah, I need to do, see a little bit more. And they use I did it as also hear like about you, this you live in one. you live in Maine, right? I'm very curious. And, all right, God, so we did talk about that castle. before. I, I love yeah, Adventure I mean, like, Time stuff because like even Adventure Time so whimsical, on. and it's like just uh, the guy that, game for you to uh, play. The dude that was uh, doing the and uh, if you don't use it, you are for doing yourself that we had a on. Because this like, is something uh, I love that setting. As in, like right, right. this is my personal history. It's like I could go back and say I know Southeast right. New Mexico. Right. Yes. Now yeah, like uh, that's what inspired uh, this guy to start it. with. When but then he don't... just started homebrewing and then never stopped, yeah. and it just kept getting better and better. <laughs> stop! Won't stop. <laughs> Honestly, you know, you, you can't fault a guy for trying. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 <laughs> West Virginia as a campaign? <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. I don't know what to say to that, but I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah. What does what does the West Virginia like? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so where, yes. where, where, where does, where do you yeah. have? Oh, your, absolutely. Uh, and I... what area do you know <laughs> that that you can like? Use as your backdrop for mm. your campaign that you could just pull out of thin air. That yeah, you could just like I could spend the next hour and a half talking about it from where you live. Right. Uh, I bet there's some great stuff you could pull out of that. Like uh, it back to my example of uh, oh, so Maine. you have the Jersey Devil. Dude, spooky shit goes on up here. You have the Jersey and, like, Devil. Uh, the media portrays Bruce it as spooky King. shit all the time. Uh, just nonstop. You, you got anything by Stephen you King. Sopranos. You got 
the Iron Giant. You got that uh, fucking uh, show where they call every uh, supernatural thing to, that happens the Troubles. It like, is. It is. The fuck are the Troubles, dude? <laughs> I've never heard of this. Uh, then there's a uh, Story no, no, Brook, no, no, which is no, all that's like Metropolis uh, is New York. You know, little storybook so, uh, so, Disney and, type and, character and Star- shit, like uh, uh, any Grimm's fairy tale uh, princess uh, bullshit that you've ever heard of. Yeah, well, that, that's Story Brook, and it's it. all like spooky and shit. Uh, and then like uh, you got. Star City it, it and just, uh, City the list keeps going on and on. Yeah, like they got that old tech. school monster yeah. uh, soap opera, yeah. oh, uh, Dark be. Shadows that took place in Maine, where vampires, mm-hmm. werewolves, all kinds of spooky yeah. shit. Like anytime there's media depicting Maine, except for like some shit films like uh, uh, Empire no, Falls, it's, it's always spooky shit. Yeah, advanced. I mean Maine is just so, a really like, good setting. Uh, for that, I guess. What Los Angeles used to be for the aerospace industry. You know, right? So you you think of that that where you have a lot of scientists mm. together in one place, like Los Alamos in New Mexico. You have a lot of scientists in mm. a small area, right? That do experiments that mutants. See, <laughs> it's like for me, that's where you got I, I, can, from. I think about things <laughs> like. So I live in I live in South Jersey. You know, um, so I think of things like right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I thought of. Like pine <laughs> barrens, you know. I thought about like Philadelphia, New York, no, yeah. You know, there's mm. a lot. Well, that would make sense because, yeah. like, if you think of Apple, <laughs> true. And, I don't know too and, much about that. And things but, all yeah. spin around. <laughs> true. true. <laughs> you know, uh, Gotham City is supposed to be in New true. Jersey, and that's why it's such a. It's, that's why it's a crime-ridden cesspool. I always thought it was supposed to be like <laughs> New York really? or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. you're right. You're right. <laughs> so wait, would that make Gotham City like Philadelphia? I I don't know, but I'm trying to figure out which one would be Star City in Central City. The guy can oh, the guy can fly right. around the world in like a matter of seconds, and you're worried about how close he no, is. I think so. Yeah, I think they're in different states. Like, uh, yeah, the, the, I know they're in different states. It, it's always weird because, like, uh, I I believe that uh, Metropolis is supposed to be. Is, not it's too North far from <laughs> what Seattle's <laughs> not a state. Star City is in Seattle. <laughs> City is based on the mm. Oh, I see. Right. Oh. Ooh. Uh, dude that that straight uh brings me to thinking of black mesa because like half-life fan all the way you know i don't know how accurate this is but this one says I, i'm Star sorry city i just don't imagine that uh, uh that, that, that national that, city that, is right around sound, san francisco uh, what, bedlam or what are they what was it arkham yeah arkham freeland I, yeah it's gotta black be lightning it's just got to be. That makes sense. It's just got to be by like Chicago. Chock full of people in wheelchairs. Surprise me, it's not New York, but it's in Maryland, close to Baltimore. You could see that. Yeah, yeah, because like, no, he doesn't it, kill. Realistically, it it's got to be closer in a to uh, yeah, yeah. Kansas oh, yeah. in some yeah. way. Yeah. They're all like, like in that area. Yeah, it's got to be closer to the Kent family farm. You know, <laughs> right, so right. It's, it's got to be driving distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that, the bronze kneecap. It, it does well, seem... Dude, I, I watched a lot of Smallville growing up, so I'm just like, okay, they're getting the back and forth between uh, no, no. Uh, this Metropolis <laughs> and Smallville relatively oh. in a decent time, like uh, at least an hour. That's like how long it takes me to get to <laughs> the nearest uh, city, Bangor. <laughs> so, like, they're always like, oh, we got to go to Gotham. It's like a six-hour flight, like. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, what are, what are you doing to just have all like this was, much was. crime? Like, really, Batman's really out there beating the shit out of people I on mean, the daily, like, uh, and people yeah, that, are that's still that's... out there causing trouble. Like, uh, who wants to trifle with Batman? Like, are you, you, you crazy, dude? Breaking every bone in your body. Like, uh, I'll go <laughs> knock over a, sm- a bank in a small town. Fuck that shit. <laughs> well, the worst I got to deal with in a small town is some hick with a shotgun. Much better than dealing with Batman. 
<laughs> hey, this is this is going to be a problem for Arkham? us, DMs. Uh, like, Arkham, uh, you know, because like people use like Skyrim characters and other characters from <laughs> video games, so, so you have to get familiar with like the kind of characters Ooh, yeah, that, we, that that your players oh want to play. God. So I am in. I, He's like, I, I'll I, never you know kill. I think that man would be way, 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 way more effective. <laughs> Uh, they're basing their character off. It's like of, I'll paralyze you know? yeah. <laughs> when they come to me because I know that Dude, that's what's going to be next. It's if like, he just stole every time he captures a criminal, if really he just stole looking. everyone's left patella, it's have a that's the kneecap. <laughs> it doesn't get burnt up by the sun until the end of the freaking. <laughs> yeah, I'm edgy. <laughs> <laughs> the true origin story. Oh my god, I love the bronze. I mean, if I, let, let's face face it. I was a villain. Dude, I'm just trying to find out. The, the origin one. story of the crimson chin was what got me. Where he's like, "My oh, chin is God. tingling. I am <laughs> the crimson one. chin." No, you it find out so Tinder well, you set him up with someone else, bitten by a radioactive, <laughs> handsome <laughs> actor. You said that way they never have the. the Fairly Odd Parents was ahead of its time with its <laughs> comedy. It really was. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I guess before we get too lost in our sauce, so what, what other news do we have? <laughs> uh, we we can do, we can circle back to that. Oh, <laughs> what do we? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have been uh, getting Baldur's Gate, and you know, maybe making it one of our uh, uh, series on our YouTube or like our maybe a stream. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You make something sound detrimental, t- suddenly becomes a bonus. You're <laughs> mm-hmm. all playing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be like, I'm the dark one. I'm the dark one. <laughs> oh, He's got God. the golden ticket. <laughs> the thirteenth dark one this year. <laughs> Come on, please. Uh dude. Oh. 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 Nani? Trying to find the chosen one. Probably probably take him out. Probably what he's gonna say. No, it just makes out like the half the, of the, the bad guy got to power it up. I'm gonna find the, the chosen one and gonna you know, kiss him. It's like... <laughs> uh, it, it's brilliant. I mean, there's a lot of life hacks along that uh, route. I mean, whether it's a uh, you know using your Tinder dates to find the chosen one. <laughs> uh, like a re- <laughs> my my dad recently discovered a new life hack by telling everybody that he's engaged he can avoid interactions with uh women that, that harass <laughs> Silvery him, uh, all the time so he's like okay down. yeah hey, i don't want to deal down, with that shit bars. so I'll, I'll tell uh, on facebook I- i'm engaged so lots of them will back off but then the ones that kind of slip through that really want to get at him like he i after he uh, goes and uh, does his thing, he can be like, oh, no, you have to go. My well, fiance is going to be anyways. here soon. I mean, you are supposed to like, kind of research what you're doing. I mean, if I'm wrong, you know, it's not like you're a sorcerer. Isn't this well, a, a sorcerer? Like, like I have a boyfriend, with, you know, <laughs> with the birth well, Yes, but he's <laughs> achieved that power. He has gone into... Man. He snuck into their base and stole it for himself. He stole a sacred text. He yes, he stole shadow. the MacGuffin. <laughs> he got the, oh. the, the shadow clones. <laughs> <laughs> he learned the forbidden jutsu. <laughs> <laughs> You know that that's the cool thing about uh, Naruto with the, the those forbidden jutsu. Yeah, it you know, turns you out pray for it, you're not. Whatever. It's not that you're not allowed to do them. It's just that you really shouldn't because they usually come at a cost. Right. Yeah. You, people usually aren't like capable of using. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Like I, I, I looked into it. Like the only reason that the <laughs> shadow clone you, jutsu like, was supposed to be a forbidden spells? jutsu is just like because it was very chakra I mean, intensive. As, as, so it's like as, okay, as, you, you gotta spend, you gotta spend a lot of energy on this one. Don't use it. That's like, forbidden. You're a dipshit if you do this. You have the potential, right? you know, of you know applying. <laughs> I mean, I would, do so much hand, oh, the shadow I mean, I would do just so much with wind. I would just so go to town with wind. Ooh, you know, so I, I need to start labeling so certain spells in my D and D games as out. forbidden spells. Well, that's one of the yeah, material components to it. It's a legume, so it's a bean Damn. or a pea yeah. or something like that. So it's like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm you, you, instead of having a banned <laughs> spell a list, have today, a forbidden <laughs> spell list where you have to work to get those spells. Like you have to steal them from yeah. somebody. Like you got to obtain that knowledge. <laughs> Back to the bean. <laughs> Overly yeah. caffeinated. Part, I think. I mean, if you're a oh, wizard, man, you don't want me to start doing character <laughs> <laughs> like that. I would go to town on that. I think it's still kind of upgrading you know, themselves. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. I was like, oh, I man, think a lot of people were like, you know, going, I have like, these spells. Oh, I just kind of got. Them. No, that's like, a good ah, idea. But I, know, but I already did it. <laughs> uh, that's a good idea. I already did that. <laughs> I, I like the idea of having to go and obtain your spells outside of being a wizard. Like, nah, uh, if you're a druid, no. it's like I realize you I need someone to teach you this spell like, or like no, you, you like, like, oh, i'm like repeating like myself every once in a while i'm like going oh no dude I, I stopped in the middle of one yeah like, like you gotta go commune going, with certain spirits one. to get <laughs> access to a forbidden spell like oh, okay. maybe like you homebrew some of your spells it's like okay this spell comes at a cost it's forbidden but it's really good yeah i would let people homebrew spells more often <laughs> yeah. if that was the case for sure oh yeah yeah mm. Part, I think. Oh, I absolutely do. Oh, yeah. I always love when people do that. Mm. <laughs> 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 Lagoon. He's just throwing out lentils. The lagoon wizard. <laughs> Act of the bean. <laughs> Whip, whips out a full bag of red kidney. <laughs> Didn't we talk about the damn coffee warlock packed of the bean? <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds like a hairy house. Ah, like, dude. Uh, uh, IDB, right uh, like, he I'm puts sorry. out some fun <laughs> homebrew. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, in that case, we encourage it. <laughs> Re Revisiting uh, the classics. It's like, ah, shit. Right. Recycling them shower thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that too. Like uh, ultimately, when I do that, I just take whatever I made uh, previously, <laughs> have a little bit of a look at it, and be like, ah, I can do better. And th then I'll like change it up. <laughs> it's just like, okay, there, this is more balanced. Genesis. I was an idiot Genesis. before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm. uh, Sam, what do we got for the monster this week? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tonight, I have prepared to talk about the Naga. Naga. naga uh, dude, naga. the first time I uh, used a Naga as a DM, one of the guys in your party fucked the Naga. <laughs> yeah, he did. He ate a magic candy to give himself a second dick and not even one day into ha being Johnny Two Dicks and he fucks a Naga. Yep. And after having the worst experience of his life and being traumatized, didn't he like die? Or something? I don't remember. <laughs> like, uh, uh, no, uh, he proceeded to live a, a long career of dancing mimes out of their career and crashing weddings. Right, right. Was that the one where we did a band? 
<laughs> uh, dude, uh, that was a wild one. Uh, yeah, that was that was the band one. And uh, if you remember correctly, when, when he went to go down below deck with the, the Naga after they successfully rescued it, the uh, the uh, people on the ship Danism. were taking bets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also got into the betting, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you? I mean, there are so many things incompatible with giant Naga and Clyde Monkey Man. Oh man, yeah, and I didn't mention he was a monkey man. Too. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, man. Now, some people may know what a naga is. You know, we wow. talked about it a little it was... bit. It's a snake person, basically. Uh, so, appearing in the first edition monster manual, nagas were serpentine creatures of great intellect and natural mastery of sorcery. Nagas resembled giant snakes with heads that were a humanoid resemblance. Ooh, Typically range from 10 to 20 how feet, the point, of or, like, because the three same to sort of six point one meters in was length in, and weighed around two hundred to five hundred pounds. Ninety one to two hundred and thirty kilograms. And you had that Hellenistic so some were known to be over hundred feet, into, uh, thirty meters in length. Into with Buddhism and long boys. And, uh, <laughs> I, not really I would say but, so. The such. You know, and what's really that, cool about that, Nagas that is, influence uh, actually. You know how much I love going into mythology, right? And I found out yeah stuff about Nagas. Mm. So, yeah, I know, right? So, going into the real life mythology here, in traditional Hinduism, no, he Buddhism, needs a tax. John he wants the money. Uh, Naga, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, Naga are a member but of a We class. got an educated guest tonight. <laughs> no. We define beings half human and half cobra. They are a strong, handsome species who can assume either wholly human or wholly serpentine form and are potentially dangerous but often beneficial to humans. They live in an underground kingdom called Naga. Often Nagalita. beneficial. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the case of Clive Monkey Man, I just <laughs> <laughs> They live in an underground kingdom called Nagaloka or Pataloka Loka, which is filled with resplendent palaces, beautifully ornamented with precious gems. The creator deity, Brahma, <laughs> relegated the Nagas to new to the nether regions when they became too populous and <laughs> to the nether them, regions <laughs> commanded, commanded them to bite only the truly evil or those destined to die prematurely they are also associated with waters rivers lakes seas and wells and are the guardians of treasure in buddhism nagas are often represented as door guardians or as in tibet as minor deities the naga king <laughs> muchalinda I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Mucha linda. <laughs> Who sheltered the Buddha from rain for seven days while he was in deep meditation. <laughs> Beautifully depicted in the 9th to 13th century Mon Khmer Buddhas, what are now Thailand and Cambodia. In, how do you say it again? Jainism? Jainism, god damn it. In the third, Tirthakra. Tirthankara who is a savior who has succeeded in crossing over life's streams of rebirth and has made a path for others to follow. Um, the Parshavantha uh, is also known with the canopy of Naga heads above his head. So this was like their, uh, their savior, you know, depicted, and he was often, you know, shown with having several Naga heads. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, Dude. You're a hydra at that point. <laughs> yeah, and there are a lot of similarities I'm finding in uh, depictions of Naga and hydras. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, yeah, we're going for true neutral on that one. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. I like love that kind of shit. Like, uh, like Alexander the Great wasn't about to just go and destroy everything in his wake. He's like, no, we got to assimilate. This is a, and then, like, yeah. this is a river god. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, he goes it in, floods, he takes shit, people, but, like, he doesn't care. destroy you know, everything. It's so it's like, it's, I, I got to respect that not, bur not burning every bridge across, you know? Yeah. You know, when you get to the Forgotten Realms here, to understand what Naga really are mm -hmm. from, why not we, or why don't we start with the creator and the creation yeah. with their big snake mommy? 
Shikenster, I believe is how you say it. Say it. The uh, three greater goddesses of the Naga, a deity whose many personas parallel the concepts she represented, multiplicity of being. The Naga queen embodied the process of magical life. Her many aspects, each representing a stage of life from childhood to old age. She also embodied transcendence, each aspect mm. acting in the service of wisdom. Uh, Shakinster was a wisdom seeker, its chair, its keeper, its creator, <laughs> and ultimately wisdom itself. Um, Shakinster, I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> that's how I'm mm. saying it, was a truly complicated deity. Her complexity paralleled her great wisdom. She was highly pragmatic, but simultaneously unpredictable, adhering to no fixed sense of morality or ethics. Mm. She was at once an inquisitive explorer a harsh ho- or, and a harsh hoarder, sometimes guiding the unwise and utterly destroying them at others. This was because uh, Shakinster was a multifaceted uh, deity. Very whimsical. Yeah, it was very... Um, it was kind of depicted to have the same kind of heads, right? So you can kind of expect personalities hmm. to be kind of all over the place, you know? Um as this kind of depiction of being very multifaceted, like it says. Uh, mm. Despite this divided nature, however, many aspects were not several, despite yeah. several separate beings, but the reflections of one, uh, each of an undeniable part of the overarching mm-hmm. intelligence that was the Naga Queen. It was difficult to say what alignment, if any, Shakinster could be, if could be uh, said to fall into. The mere existence of her seeker and acquirer aspects were not always evident. Although known as the three-faced or five-faced queen, hmm. her overall good stop. But isn't the Nagas is really supposed to be immortal, anyways? I mean, you kill yeah. them and they come back. But you could kind of tell, you know. From... And uh, I think to anyone who's uh, yeah. seen the the short that I posted about True Neutral, you can definitely feel, you know, the similarities here. Um, Probably the Guardian one. And to some people, it can be a little confusing. That would make more sense. Uh, while it was clear to what alignment the seeker, weaver, and acquirer represented, chaotic good, chaotic evil, and lawful evil, respectively, it was debatable whether or not the empower represented lawful good, while the preserver represented true neutrality or vice versa. So all of this means, you know, the aspects of what this entity and God can embody. You know, every, every part of its being. Yeah. 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 Flows through it all yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it makes I, sense like yeah, yeah it, it makes sense that a uh, snake like being would be some kind of river god like entity yeah because like the, uh, rivers are s- snaky you know <laughs> yeah that is true <laughs> I mean, even the uh, the evil aspects of the Naga Queen could be said to hurt serve the uh, the higher purposes, right? The acquirer hoarded the acquirer hoarded knowledge in danger of being lost, and the weaver advocated destruction for the purpose of clearing room for new creations. You know, it all kind of tied together as the you know idea of what true neutral would be. You know, it all kind of fits mm. the cosmology that I love so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is- but yeah you guys understand that a little bit but um yeah, yeah. i wanted to talk about the uh the subspecies a little bit here as there are kind of a, a lot of different kind of naga, right? so you have kind of the uh the mm, general, let's hear it guardian nagas you know you got the spirit nagas you got the dark another uh and then you get kind of like the water nagas which are a little more elemental um and then you get to be like iridescent nagas which i believe have like very very pretty you know scales and such and all of these that's a common kind of system in, in, their in like a lot of cultures i mean you have the, the world ability. serpent that so they are all Doris. you have the you have tiamat which is the babylonian um, and then you get into the minor species gods, like and, ones that i haven't know, even have heard in, of honestly in, 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 in a society naga, where you're basically naga, on the indus the river naga. Or the Sindus Naga River, Hydra, depending on which which <laughs> yeah, way. And then you get into things like the you Bone Naga, bone, bone uh, uh, normally yeah. created as guardian, uh, river goddess. A similar looking creature, mm. spirit Naga, a similar was the Naka. Yeah, because like a, there's a lot. Uh, yeah. The Bone yeah. Naga is one of the first things that comes to my mind. So just I mean, it stands out so much. Quetzalcoatl, right. you know. Quetzalcoatl, and it like, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a is, skeletal uh, undead. <laughs> but you have this uh, this this uh, this and, cultural you know, bias the towards. The, the serpent. Whenever you're yeah. dealing with it, yeah, pretty much. I think it's supposed to have yeah. a, even set. That's some Greek shit right there. Set you know, as a as a serpent. 
Uh, so anytime once you have a river culture, it's it's a good place to put a river god. Naga Hydra. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the guardians. Mm. Yeah, the guardian nagas, for example, are the uh, the lawful good ones. Uh, if I remember correctly, like the guardian nagas will exist as long as their task uh, is still there to be completed. Yeah, yeah as long as there is like like their task to like guard a place, you know, for example, I mean, they'll guard it for as long as that place exists. Like, yeah, they'll just stick to it. Yeah, I think spirit naga are kind of the same way, you know. Hmm. So uh, Nagas and their deities were perceived as having distinct sexes. Uh, they were an entirely hermaphroditic species. A Naga could reproduce by copulating another member of their species. Sorry, another, another member of their subrace, or simply by impregnating itself. No method was preferred over the other. Hmm. And the choice of Not method like came down to convenience stopped. or personal preference. <laughs> Much like most snake and reptile species, Nagas were known to dislike cold climates. Um, because of the flexibility their species had in regards to reproduction, the concept of mates held far less importance amongst Nagas compared to other creatures. Yeah, that's a little tidbit. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So, getting into their kind of belief system a little bit here. Uh, you know, obviously they kind of worship this, uh, the keister, you know, but they, they also have <laughs> the keister. But yeah, they also they all worship the world serpent. You know, some theologians speculated that their curiosity and questioning over his many facets of nothing would make me happier than to following the world serpent. The world no serpent's fragmentation, sure whatever it's and guarding, the fall of it's worth it. <laughs> Maher shock. <laughs> Most nagas worship Shakista, it's electric so goddess of fragmented from like, him, oh, and her son Terafair. Right on. <laughs> Benelir, ben, Benelir Nagas oh, come were known on. to we'll, worship we'll, we'll other just resurrect. Come back again. Hmm. Like other not sure. Yeah. Pretty cool. So majority of them worship the world serpent or Shakister. Uh, or you know, the, <laughs> the fragmented <laughs> child well. of Shakister, Terrafair. Same thing. They just have an upper body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to get sued by TSR. <laughs> yeah, and I believe that there is uh, some Aztec equivalents in uh, Mayan as well. Mm-hmm. Not that I could put a name to it. What's the bottle? Yeah, yeah, that, oh, that's the like one. You wouldn't get sued by Watsi at this point either. So yes. don't even yes. go there. My next tech. They'll just steal it from you. That's all, and then you have to go do a lawsuit. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> I wish someone would tell them that. <laughs> mm. Mm. I wish they could yeah. figure that one out. And the, Absolutely. I mean, at this point, like we're just basically the aspects are always very, D&D you know, for uh, of Watsi. Mm. They can cover so many things, and they're always very powerful. <laughs> like, even being a lesser deity that this one is, you know, very, very powerful in the domain. Yeah. Side. Yeah. Um, and now, last but not least, getting into the abilities here, as there are so many different types of Nagas, it's hard to kind of, you know. Well, it's not like the good old days, but I just said you mean you know, about. it's like, uh, you're going um, to have to buy the minis and the books, and then through now you're going to have to buy the VTT. The sets and... do vary as well as Oh, you're going to definitely get Boulder's Gate. Guardian Nagas, so. CR 10, lawful they, good. They for example, Mace Pit Poison, while the Spirit Nagas, CR 10, lawful evil, cannot. This carries, this, sorry, this carries over to the type of spells they can cast as well. No, no, no. That, as a correspond to their purpose and alignment. That's that's where they're going to have like uh, that, that's where the blue leg yeah. market comes from. <laughs> right. Yeah, they can they can still learn, you know. <laughs> majority of Naga are large, yeah. uh, mid to high CR monstrosities with a large variety of alignments. Like I said. Oh, I've seen yeah. those mammoth bone mm, dice. That's, and that's all I have for Naga. I'm to really freaking tempted. Uh, there, there's both oh, a lot so and cool. not a whole lot on them. <laughs> It, it's a, a weird juxtaposition, yeah. but ultimately, from what we got here, I would say if I was I to put an IRL fight score on this really one, uh, that's going to be expensive. a. I, I'd put Narwhal. that up there at like a 
an eight or a nine. Narwhal, because yeah. that's just bone. What kind dude, of not die? You, that you seriously about to so fight a giant snake man? And that dude, it would be like, so illegal. Th- that's in my too much. Even I get the, the, the base is formed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, chances are they're gonna be a pretty high level spellcaster. They're smarter than you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got <laughs> magics and they can crush you with their muscles. Yeah. I'm I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> oh. Meteorite? Oh, it's gonna oh. be so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh you know someone makes that stuff. There's gotta be. Yeah. It's still like, I gotta try. Like, this one's <laughs> off. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? If, you, if you were to take on a naga you'd have to like uh <laughs> set some kind of a trap like you, yeah. you gotta you gotta ambush these things like you can't just like fight them head on i mean shit is already yeah, dealing it's with like, like getting a, those you'd have to be pretty strong to it's take like them like out right dealing with you, you how easily they break you know, i mean if you had like original D mm. dice mm. and ever played with them for any period well, of time if it works for batman you know it can work for me quickly yeah, those corners wear off <laughs> on cheap dice and i would cry the, you know, I, <laughs> I think they're pretty cool mm. i think they could use a little more love let's try not to talk about the uh the one t a little bit as they're not really related but a little bit related you know <laughs> Right, right. Right. They're a little more humanoid. Mm. I did find a lot of Naga's <laughs> What pieces, are you, anti person I guess? You're trying to shoot For, tanks uh, with that People die? are very <laughs> interested in those kind of things. And honestly, homebrewing monster races is <laughs> is basically a thing as old as D&D itself. Yeah. I did see a lot of I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're just like one bad experience ah, from becoming a super villain right now, aren't you? <laughs> Rest in peace, TSR. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're they're not above it. <laughs> yeah. Well, little do they know that they don't yeah. own D and D. The D and D is owned by uh, the community. <laughs> it is oh, a swallow. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, on, honestly, like they're sitting out there trying to see how can we make money from a bunch of nerds sitting at a so table like playing a uh, uh, playing for ten sided dice and a. And a ten-sided die out of it. Yeah, you really thought you were going to own that one? (laughs) Because it makes sense on the side, guys. You tried. Is the it does it have like the rainbow sheen to it? Oh, Mm. that sounds pretty. Uh, uh, They should just be selling three D printers and uh, material for the three D printers, like high quality material to get your to get your minis (laughs) right. Don't roll those. (laughs) Your dice, your dice gel for your Ah, team. Lean into it. You know exactly what your player, what your people are doing. I just want minis made out of dinosaur bones. (laughs) What is it? Lead lined. (laughs) Well, you know what. They're so cool, <laughs> dude. Uh, what's the most exotic uh, dice that you have on that subject? <laughs> what are you freaking Oppenheimer? At this point? What you got a demon core on us? <laughs> he pulls mm. out the demon core that, on us. That'd be cool. Like, <laughs> takes out half of New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I I like your gusto for that one. <laughs> if I could pick anything, I, I would want get like, past the X-rays at the, either like at a, the post like office, a, like a lava rock, like straight from a volcano, or something like a rock from space, or something like a meteor. Ooh, that, that's yeah, some like, cool like, shit. Meanwhile, right, guys, oh, back over at, at the federal government. Yeah. Oh, there's no way there isn't because that's just in awesome just and a half, there. dude. Like I've seen websites that make uh, dice out of exotic woods and gator bones. 
Well, I'd like to get we'll like a set of like a some uh, like, like some made from a amethyst or something I'll made from crystals. Way. I love crystals. <laughs> more gem dice. Hard mm. to tell. Of these. It's just because we didn't pay the bill over in Alaska for that. I do see that, some that of them <laughs> labeled meteorite dice, so I don't know if they're that, real. That's fair meteorite. enough. Uh, the most wild uh, dice I own currently are some dice that were made with powdered uranium. Ah, yes. Hell yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Seriously. <laughs> it's not like they had like a uh, well you see my dad's know, a bit like of a Vader mad lad like uh, he uh, in, in Russia, right? uh, self-proclaimed uh, like mad scientist uh, in, of like, sorts <laughs> I certainly hope so uh, the uh, my only issue with the uranium dice I have is like I, I know how to store well, them and everything, probably, and they're safe to roll the with because uh, they're the equivalent of uh, cosmic radiation at sea level as far as uh, if you measure, measure it on a Geiger counter. So it's rude. they're objectively not that dangerous, but you don't want to be holding so them really, constantly. If a virus came out of like the permafrost or something like that, we'd probably go. Oh, wow. Certainly not. I well, mean, if not for the uranium, uh, for the fact that it's made with resin and. Uh, my, I guess my main gripe is that I haven't uh, had a full s set made. Like it's like half a set. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you get it. <laughs> All right. So these are really cool. That I found some crystallized titanium mm. guys for four hundred and fourteen dollars. Ooh, we should do a, a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really cool. Uh, uh, ooh, dude, Bismuth would make a. Everybody, go check out amazing dice. Dice. Dot com. Uh, like It's really a terrible cool. material for it, but damn, right. if it wouldn't be pretty. Wait, this looks like those. You walk into the village and you notice that everyone's over <laughs> eight years old, including <laughs> <laughs> <Rudy> the elves. <laughs> 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 dude the, the uh the presentation of having uranium dice with a lead lined case it's like okay uh welcome to my home the dungeon master's here to play and for that big boss battle you want your players to know you're not fucking around you bust out the uranium dice oh shit you pull them out they're just glowing red <laughs> glowing <laughs> 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 you gotta like mm. shield your eyes like how, how legal do you think it would be to uh make another set and uh do like a giveaway with the uh podcast <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not how, how did he do it the first time like <laughs> <laughs> is he is he supposed to have should we be talking about this online <laughs> Yeah, our FBI agents are flipping through their books like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the FBI ain't ready for me. <laughs> Get me in the interrogation room, and here I am, uh, just like uh, rolling dice. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude. Turn on the uh, weather all I know is the storm's been fucking with my internet this entire time. It's like, okay, uh, things gotta go in and out. I'm like, ah, shit. I want to hear what Sam's saying. saying. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've heard the conspiracies thing. You know, man, it's getting crazy these days. Their weather machine is doing some stuff, probably. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You guys feel <laughs> the. Uh, Wait, have you guys heard? Uh, you the, know uh, what? I blame the aliens because uh, you know what they've had it too good for too I don't long. Know how you guys feel about this? But the uh, the Siberian permafrost is melting and releasing thousand old viruses. 
That sounds that sounds fun. <laughs> Everything is cool, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love how like nah. My favorite thing is scientists are like, oh hey, look, no, nah, no, nah, like, couldn't possibly. We like, found this dead virus. I wonder what happens if we like feed an amoeba to it. Oh god, it ate it immediately. <laughs> but, interesting. <laughs> Guess we better keep digging. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. Yeah, okay, so check this out. The one that they found <laughs> like, recently had like, I want to get the specifics on it so I don't sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. But like it had like DNA and it was like a DNA virus. And then that made me think about, I don't know if you guys follow like philosophers or like mm. and stuff. But there was one Kababa Vanga, right? Who made this prophecy that in the future there would be a virus that would cause you to rapidly age and it would be like a dna virus and then i'm like bro what if like <laughs> the siberian permafrost is releasing this like dna virus people start like waking up and they're 80. <laughs> dude first <laughs> off that's that's crazy terrifying and it would make a hell of a plot hook what kind of campaign would that be look shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> including the elves. You enter a village, seemingly normal, children running about. Yeah, like that, that's how you know that shit's going on. Then, uh, oh no, yeah, some of your characters start aging, except for the ones that are immune to diseases, like the paladin and the monk. <laughs> Sorry, <didn't> fly. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so quick to like clap that. What was it, a bug? Yeah, it was like a gnat or whatever. <laughs> Fucking got him too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam, don't fuck around. <laughs> All right. So, what is our next segment here? <laughs> We've gone off the uh, road. Connections what? rough tonight. Oh yeah, it must I be the blame hurricane. the storm. Yeah, it must be the hurricane. I'm sure. Uh, uh, Gracious editor will be able to cut it all together. He's been asking for a little more work. <laughs> uh, you know what? Speaking of which, shout out to Fenico, oh, no. the sugar daddy of the show this month. Yeah, honestly, I'm doing great. Yeah. Uh, Fenico uh, covered the cost of podcasting for this month, and we are very grateful for that. We at Dungeons and Talk Shows, uh, well, we do not support the corporations like Walmart. We do support you paying our editor. And you know, <laughs> by supporting us, so thank you, Walmart, by from Dungeons and Talk. <laughs> Give us a sponsor. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, t talking about Walmart last night with uh, a couple of our uh, guys because I, I decided to go drinking with the nerd militia boys what ah. could go wrong one thing leads to another and we're talking about uh everybody's criminal history with robbing walmart <laughs> <laughs> look man we all we all have something to say about that <clears throat> everyone's in there allegedly <laughs> i'm back nothing you could prove hey what's up welcome back <laughs> hey you know what i i just suddenly it just disappeared I thought the hurricane got you. Yeah, man. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude. Uh, I could be blown away at any moment. You know, I think this is a good time. <laughs> you can take a quick break. I'll go grab a drink. I'll take a bathroom break, and we'll be right. All right. Uh, all right. Y you do that. <laughs> it, it's off the times air? like... Uh, no. Uh, he no, just likes to going. take... Yeah, we're still I going. Can't. We're still going. I can't. You just gotta mute the mic, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You... <laughs> so, uh, tell me something. Over there in yes. Maine, where you're at, right? Like, right what kind right. of winds are you getting right now? 
Honestly, they're uh, they're relatively mild, but uh, I've been seeing power lines down because of trees falling and like uh, in my area, like uh, leaves everywhere, uh, sticks everywhere because there's so, just woods nonstop every direction you go. Yeah. So uh, 30 mile per hour winds. Yeah, just kind of like just knocking out all the sticks and weak branches. Yeah. Nothing too big, but it's been enough to knock out power in certain areas. Like uh, my my in laws, they lost power. A bunch of people. Like uh, I spent most of the day uh, on the road, just driving all over the place. And so it's like okay, seen seen quite a bit. And mm-hmm. Then I, I guess uh, some of the in laws wanted to go down to the coast and be like, we're gonna go watch the hurricane. It's like yeah, you you, you yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, no, no, that doesn't sound appealing at all. Because like when I was coming back from Guam, mm. uh, the the they had the thing over in Maui, right? And so, because right. uh, it was hurricane force winds that were going through there, because I guess a hurricane went skirting mm. ne- ne- next to it, uh, next to the little islands. And uh, so I was on the plane, right? And there was a guy from the Red Cross that was flying from Guam over there, and he was like on the phone like constantly. You know, the moment we touch down on the ground, mm. oh, arranging for this and that, and, you know, don't tell them to bring anything out. Just just send us the, the equipment, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, uh, right. there was like, it was, and, and then it wasn't until I got into the States that I realized the kind of problem that was going on. Because I was like in the air for almost like a day. Because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right? it's like a long ways away. And, yeah. uh, and I was like going, Wow. Just winds, knocking down power lines, causing fires. Mm. And it's like yeah. in Guam, which it, back in May, they had a hurricane. And like all the trees on this entire island were knocked over. Mm. And all you could see was the, the roots coming up. On for Damn. Like, Imagine on an entire island when all the trees are. Thing, and I'm like going, how am I going to use this for my next adventure? <laughs> <laughs> honestly like uh, why waste a uh, a good disaster a good catastrophe a, uh, you know like if the government shit. can't waste it why should you <laughs> <laughs> your wholehearted disbelief in our ability to go on with that shoe is, uh, is is really encouraging <laughs> Uh, he, he's been very supportive uh, this this past uh, week and a half. Wild How shit. Did you, two meet? you know, last week when oh, <laughs> it's a very very funny story. Ooh, <laughs> I laugh every time I think of this story. Yeah. Good to be in a trade. It's good to be in a trade. Right. But, uh, you know, Mm. and uh, as a... So one day I was just like, you know what? <laughs> Why, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, basically uh, from school. You guys basically met, met each other in school. Mm. Yeah, essentially. I think that's where a lot of good hey, friendships start. At least you start, have someone really. that's w- re- willing to switch up with you. That's that's a great thing. Because you don't want to be the forever DM. But do, do you get a little bit of mm. thing like going, oh, Can't switch it up. do I hold back or do I go balls to the wall as a player? <laughs> it, it, it's tough. DM to player. Because like... Mm. 
Because like all the hell that those, those players yeah. put me through, yeah. <laughs> I get a one chance to, to get me once they get behind that screen. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 mm. uh-huh. You're like it's my time. You're the sympathetic. <laughs> it, it's it's tough because I try I try not to be the tr- problem player, but <laughs> right. at, at the same time, I, I, I'm sympathetic. But at the same time, I, I also <laughs> like to cause you know, problems to, uh, to a degree because, like, I I'm a very creative well, type where it's just like speaking, creative spell casting. What can I do with this spell? spell? Like, what can I Make really sure, do that I shouldn't be able to? Spell, so I'm right. gonna sit over here and really concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Well>, actually, <laughs> so how how big of a group do you do? How 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 big of a group do you like keep it small? You like four, or you go big? I I like uh, just getting super creative with shit. It's fun. So have you done anything? Uh, over, like, it kind of fluctuates, though, because sort of sometimes like, players come and go and run games or not. Mm. I'd like to do a freaking thing in front of an audience. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, one of these days I would love to do the podcast live from a convention. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh for sure that that'd be fun uh we have contemplated okay. uh like uh doing it from uh the the metaverse I, I like have avatars like, and like do it all in like a going more yeah. retro you know theater uh, of the mind. i can't imagine there's too many podcasts uh, that do that you know but word, seems like it'd be kind of uh, niche kind of interesting where Could it's be. it's not quite it's, it's hard because like i'm thinking boy there's a lot mm. of lag time mm. in a in a in an actual game Maybe. to make a podcast actually fill in you know it's like if we have an awkward silence like right now you can fill it in <laughs> mm. <laughs> but mm. when you have an awkward silence mm. in a game you're basically <laughs> like yeah. okay i'm looking up stuff i'm thinking i'm gonna have to now take it and re-edit it yeah which I. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's not like you can just have a soundboard on speed dial for weird shit and where you could just be like. <laughs> I never got that one set up. <laughs> I've been busy this week. I had it recorded. <laughs> uh, I have a very weird descriptify this week, though. I, I think you'll enjoy this if my internet loads proper because connections are dumb this week. Uh, Expect so. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what to go for for a descriptive word, so. <coughs> Ooh, dang. I just I decided to die coughing. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> the I decided to ask Nerdbot uh, on our server. We we have a little bit of a an AI mascot, and uh, I asked Nerdbot. I, I need a D and D descriptive word that will really kind of a uh, something Dealing unique. With magic, please. And he proceeds to like make up a word, do that. And, and I am <laughs> gung ho for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Introducing kleptomancy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I I just I thought it was funny. Like uh, like stealth magic, yeah. 
Yeah, it said like he's nerdbot says kleptomancy is the magical art of uh, divination by stealing where objects are stolen. Uh, what, where the objects stolen are believed to contain hints or clues of future events. It's like, ooh. oh, wait, a future. Event. That's interesting. I, I might be able to use that. Isn't that wait? Might have to make a kleptomancy wizard as a subclass. Throw that. Sh- yeah, throw that on the Patreon. Yeah, yeah, because like uh, there's a uh, magic subclass for the the rogue, but this would be the a rogue like subclass for the wizard. You know, it'd be the answer to it. Okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, because like you got arcane trickster. Klepto, uh, kleptomancy, like, okay, okay, you got the sneaky wizard. Honestly, it kind of makes me think like Konosuba, where like Kazuma's like, uh, yeah, steal! Yeah, yeah, he kind of has like kleptomancy magic. Yeah, not a not a normal descriptify, but I, I thought it was kind of neat. <laughs> it's a fun one. Got to come up with things sometimes. I like it. Mm. Got to got to hand it to our mascot nerd bot. It may it may be Paco will come back online too soon because uh, uh, Forrest is getting his uh, stuff back together with his internet and whatnot. Sounds good to me. Generic realm, generic realm, <laughs> lots of fun, excellent. <laughs> yeah, generic realm people, it's always sunny there. Uh, I have, uh, do you want to go uh, first or should I, Sam? Uh, I think I went first last time. Let me go ahead. All right, I'm going to uh, switch on over to the fluffy folio. Because right here, I present... Oh, shit. It went... Oh, oh no. I got lost in the thing. Lost in the sauce. Uh, Sam, how about you take over while I have to scroll? <laughs> uh, they made a lot of stuff in the fluffy folio, and then like my thing got lost oh. in the shuffle. Well, you know... I, don't tell me I gotta keep on scrolling. Oh, you- no. I gotta scroll for a while. <laughs> just to see if I can like search it again. Ah. <laughs> uh, the the internet has been just fucky all night. I I blame the storm. Uh, I can go ahead and do mine if you would like. Uh yes, that would that would work. So today, I I talked about this a little bit. Um I played a character in our last campaign we did that was a soulbound. Uh, it is pretty much what it sounds like. It is a soul bound to armor, uh, gear, whatever have it. Um, you know, and it is pretty much the Alphonse character for D and D. You know, if you are a Full Metal Alchemist fan, it is pretty much that. So I'll go ahead and pull this up so I can read it in detail because I am blind and I need to zoom in. <laughs> All right, so. A soul it does help. Is a creature whose soul is no longer occupied. Sorry, whose soul no longer occupies an organic form, but has been removed and bound to another form. Most commonly, a suit of armor, though in rare cases, a golem or shield guardian. This magic is beyond most mortal casters and is most often the result of a divine intervention to rescue a soul from a dying body. 
Soulbound are exceedingly rare and not mm. widely known, often being mistaken for common monsters such as helmed horrors, animated armors, or golems. Moving into moving into one of the uh, first features you get here, Mortal Mind. While the Soulbound is capable of learning and growing smarter and wiser after the binding, it will never grow in emotional or mental maturity from the time it left its body. And since Soulbound typically mm. outlive their organic counterparts and expected lifespan, they often struggle with keeping their <laughs> memories in order or recalling specific events more than a few decades later. Many Soulbound also have long for stuff. The- yeah. Many soulbound also have longing for the taste of food and drink, other comforts of the flesh that they're incapable of experiencing. They want to fuck, man. <laughs> uh, don't we all? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> don't we? They're just like me. Oh, God, he's just like me. <laughs> all right, hold on. Pull up the next page here. All right. So, going into the... Oh, here we go. We have a mortal body. A soulbound appears as a... Con- Contiguous armored form filled with a shadowy darkness, the helmet or hood of which contains two piercing motes of light through which the soulbound perceives the world. The armor responds to external pressure and physical contact as if it is filled rather than hollow. Though the space inside can be filled or occupied and the various pieces of the armor can be removed and separated with no more than minor discomfort to the soulbound, a soulbound is both blind and deaf if the helmet or hood is removed. Most light and medium armored soulbounds that aren't equipped with the helmet chose to adopt the use of a mask ah, to avoid being mistaken. He dropped, but we brought him back. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. A soulbound's pieces are tethered to one another magically to a five foot radius and actively seek to rejoin the chest piece if set. All right. We're getting into the racial traits here. Your constitution increases by one. Uh, a soul bound is considered in most cases to be a magical hmm. item capable of perfect regeneration as far as physical wear and tear. However, mentally and emotionally, one is limited to the maturity of the age and race of the soul itself when it was bound. Uh, soul bound that survive more than a few centuries tend to suffer memory trauma and cognitive dissonance hmm. because of long-term memories. The maximum age for a soul bound has not yet been determined. It depends mostly on a soul bound's lifestyle and exposure to risk. If I do remember correctly, mm, makes sense. I made was uh, in the the low hundreds, so he was starting to kind of encounter some memory issues. Um, size, uh, soul bound is a height between four feet and nine feet, depending on the armor. Obviously, it has a weight according to the kind of armor it is bound to, but your size is ultimately medium. So, commonly with these kind of characters, you'll see the living construct uh, feature. Uh, you are a mm-hmm. con. In addition, you are immune to poison conditions, sleep paralysis, charm, fear, and disease effects. You have resistance to poison. You do not need to eat, sleep, or breathe. You cannot gain the magical effects from consumables or recover HP from potions. As a soul bound, you recover only, uh, you receive only one half from recovery dice during a short or long rest, and the effects of healing spells unless the spell effect details otherwise. So, you know, because I guess this, this does make a lot of sense for me, um, as most healing spells kind of pertain to healing the body mm. and there is no body <laughs> would you use bend i mean as then wouldn't that be your cure wounds the, the armor kind of mends itself and doesn't really represent the mm. damage it takes so i, I guess in a way it does it's, but as far as you're still dropping hp right you're in combat yeah, you're yeah. dropping hp yeah. so yeah. at a certain point you will hit like unconsciousness right 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 and so yeah yeah the recovery from that, since you only get half the amount from mm-hmm. from a short or long rest, right? Right. Means that yeah. you would be what? Uh, you're running with the existing hit points from what you would get from your AC, or is this like a... Um, what, yeah, what's, it kind of depends. Mm. So, in, um, in most games that I've been in, uh, DMs usually allow you to use the mend cantrip to expend, like, say, a hit die. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I would for say healing. Probably, yeah, I, I would say probably in this case of your body is the armor, and you do kind of, you know, have that connection to it. Yeah, you could probably use mend as sort of like a. But I mean, if if I went with a golem option, say if, mm-hmm. with with the with the spirit belt, then yeah. I could probably use the same kind of recovery thing. Like if it was a flesh golem, it would be lightning. If it was fire, mm-hmm. or it would fire mm-hmm. iron. I could probably see that. I guess hmm. that would probably depend so on those that. spells would be actually my cure wounds. Yeah, I could see that for sure. 
Ooh, I, I do like the alternative <laughs> there because, like, if it makes sense, if it fits, it ships. Yeah, I mean, if it's all kind of the same of like, if you can heal a construct, you know, yeah. whatever way that applies. You know. I would say definitely. I always and, wondered how that worked with like first cart grass. Yeah, right. Mm. How he gets healed? Like, does he kind of just like remend his armor? Like, that's kind of what I'm at. Or like, where his is his arc welder? Yeah. And where does he <laughs> <Right>. keep it? <laughs> you know? His core is like on the inside. Right? So I imagine. <laughs> I kind of picture like he he like floods his core with excess magic, right? And kind of like repairs himself, but. In this way, that wouldn't really work. There's nothing to flood, right? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> you would just kind of coat the armor, I guess. <laughs> I don't sure. know. Fresh coat of paint mm. and some bondo, and you're set. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talking more about the uh, uh, it, it's a the strange anatomy of this. You have the it is very interesting. <laughs> yeah. As a soulbound, you gain advantage on all death saving throws. A soulbound can recover hit points through a ritual you innately know, uh, requiring no material components to cast. The ritual, uh, sorry, <laughs> the ritual fully restores your HP to a maximum. It has a casting time of four hours. So, oh, that's in short place rest. of a long rest, right? In place of your long rest or your short rest, you would do this ritual. Oh, so basically, you're like an elf. You only need half a half yeah. a, a long rest, right? And this would be kind of like, um, I guess it kind of depends on your DM, but I would kind of treat this as like how Warforged enter that like inactive state. Oh, like the, you know, the yeah. Center. I would kind of picture it like that. You enter like a like a rest state, sort of. I, I'm it just makes sense. I'm I'm just like a little bit worried about leveling up. If I don't have anything that I could uh, <laughs> uh, that that I keep experience from, you know, mm. that how the heck do I level up as a character if I'm stuck in a, a suit of armor? Mm. Well, um, what's interesting about that, and I will get into that in a minute. Oh, uh, I have all kinds well, of questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so getting into the next kind he's of got thing. answers yeah, there we go as a soul bound you may go into an inert state with full awareness of your surroundings a soul bound gains the benefits except for the restored hp of a long rest after four hours the time taken to cast the reparation ritual does not count toward this time as a construct we're resistant to the effects of exhaustion yeah um and may recover one level of exhaustion for every 30 minutes spent in your inert state okay all right, and then we have naturally armored. As a soul bound, your body is composed of a magical material that makes you inherently armored. This material takes place of armor and thus cannot be worn with armor. Uh, in addition, your natural AC increases by one. Hmm. You are considered to be proficient in the armor you are bound to, and any spell or ability that treats a creature armored in metal differently considers you to be armored as such, regardless of the kind of armor. So, like lightning, and so how it kind of interacts with, you know. This magic, one, okay. Armor. Not 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 to piss on your parade or anything like that. I'm just like going. Okay, now here I have a question. Yeah, yeah. What if I got a shield? You can have shields. Yeah, you, I can have shields. Yeah, but I can't have uh, yeah. extra armor. Yeah, you can't wear like yeah. a helmet on top of your helmet. Okay. Like, <laughs> I'm just, hey, I'm just wondering how much how many no, yeah, times I can weld onto yeah, onto yeah. my keister. I'm trying to remember the, the character I played. <laughs> um, I played a like a, an Anubis clad kind of like. Uh, mm. brave domain like cleric paladin kind of deal. I think I, if I remember I had a shield or like a sword or something. I can't remember. Because if I'm only getting one yeah. bonus on my AC, but it also depends I, on what I kind definitely of would want to get a shield. <laughs> yeah. so if you're like the armor, like medium armor, yeah. Nah, if you're the heavy, you know. This is super interesting, and I do kind of like this a lot. You have a very kind of heavy anti-magic susceptibility. You are incapacitated while in the area of anti-magic field. If targeted by dispel magic, you must succeed on a constitution saving throw against the caster spell save DC mm. or fall unconscious for one minute. Ooh. You're out. <laughs> Ooh, I, one minute? I love that's like what they can do, you know? That, that's ten yeah, like, rounds. That's, that's dead. That's major. <laughs> yeah. And the, you it, know, It's like temporary death, really, at that point. I like the idea because, like, having this weakness is, like, Something that's not very obvious, but like can be very exploited. I like. Oh, I'd put a beholder in your face. That's just yeah. what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> having an enemy. <laughs> yeah, you just don't want to be anywhere near a beholder ever. Yeah, or they, a roast monster. Looking at you, wouldn't think of you as like you know a caster, really, like a magical creature. They see you as like a, a creature clad in armor, right? Why would they cast anti magic? So it's like you kind of see the deception. Hey, beholders. 
Yeah, but Pretty holders will have to have, have that thing on all times. <laughs> and maybe my favorite uh, trait of this, um, unoccupied. It is possible to use your hollow form for its original purpose, being donned by a creature of suitable size who is, who is then treated as if wearing armor of your type. You may have that creature ignore strength requirements to wear your armor if you so choose, though the armor does not gain proficiency. Oh, sorry, the, the creature does not gain proficiency. Mm. Uh, if the armored creature is an ally... Well, we have in, talked about this before because it's basically fusion. It is. Uh, you and the armored creature may each roll for all ability checks that either of you are proficient in and use the higher of the two rolls. You may each make strength and constitution saving throws using the higher of the two. Uh, same for dexterity. Uh, you and the armored creature might take your turn at the same time. You each roll initiative separately and take the lower of the two. Either of you, not both, may take an action, reaction, and bonus action on your turn. Either of you may have advantage on attack roll as long as at least one of you is proficient with the weapon or spell being used. Additionally, whichever creature does not make the attack roll on your turn may add his or her ability modifier to the damage on hit if the weapon or spell allows a primary user to do so. So basically, <laughs> magical girl transformation, suddenly you can wield my <laughs> two-handed sword. <laughs> Watch oh, me destroy your action economy by putting three oh. cobalts in, a, in plate mode. <laughs> And then, <laughs> Oof. <laughs> what's really cool about this is um, while being armored or while armored by you, spell range and melee attack cannot be made against the armored creature inside. Uh, anytime you and the armored creature disagree on a course of action, uh, either may make a contested strength check against the other, determine the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Always love. <laughs> I was just like wondering when do you guys get shared custody? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take I'll take no, the legs this way. You, you take the legs that way. <laughs> what was really cool that I, I had an idea to use. That's beautiful. Was using this to capture creatures, you know, forcing them, you know, into myself and then controlling them that way. Like because they can't attack me from the inside, you know, they have to contest my strength. So if they're significantly weaker. You're fucking locked mm. in there, boy. Like, like you're a freaking Iron Maiden. Yeah, I'm an Iron. I'm welcome to hell. Just add, <laughs> add spikes and you do damage. <laughs> I feel like this would be amazing if you took the Artificer Armor subclass. Oh man! <laughs> so last but not least, let's get into the small bound races. I talked about that a little bit. Uh, the sub races. Uh, we have the light armor, medium, and heavy. So with the light armor, your ability mm. to increases, uh, your dexterity increases by two, and your base speed is 35 feet. Uh, medium armor, dexterity, dexterity increases by one, constitution right. by one, uh, an additional one. So that's, that's one, two, and then the one on top of the normal. Your speed is 30 feet. Pretty standard for that. Uh, heavy armor, strength increases right. by one, constitution increases by an additional one. Pretty good. Speed is at 30 feet. So... No, pretty standard. Oh, oh no, no, no! This is awesome. Yeah, I gotta like have it. a Stay mm. Puff Marshmallow Man in padded armor. <laughs> Dude, you just pull out like Dude. Dude. who was the the, I love it. the the boss from fucking Dark Souls? <laughs> Big Hammer, <laughs> Smoke. <laughs> Dude, now now hear me out. Like, yeah. if we're gonna go absurd armor, what about some Mad Max tire armor? Oh, oh. dude. <laughs> I, I love this. And I love Fullman Alchemist, obviously, you know. I'm just, it's potential. I love it. You can just do so much with it. And I had a lot of fun playing this race when I got the chance to. You could totally do Master Blaster. Mm. Yeah. You could totally do Master Blaster with this thing. <laughs> you could just set a chair on your back and carry around hobbits. You just like. Oh, God, you got a chair. You got totally. a chair. He's right. <laughs> you, you could not only, you, you could, you could have a, like a. Mounted weapon on your on your helmet, <laughs> like a cross, heavy crossbow. <laughs> Just crank them out. I love it. You, yeah. it's beautiful. You'd be a crew for, I, I so. like that one a lot. I give it a good. Uh, I give it a good nine. I like this. Now, how would the chainmail work? Chainmail. Chainmail is because uh, like that would be your your okay. Medium mm -hmm. is is chain shirt. Heavy would be chain. Uh, like plate? Oh, chain mail. Because oh, like it's, okay. it's, it's basically doesn't have any, well, right. exoskeleton, really. Yeah. Uh, I, I would assume it just kind of like a, take like a generic form. 
Yeah. Or, or maybe it'd just be you'd be a very barrel chested <laughs> piece of armor. Yeah, I imagine it'd probably be like the thick leather with like the chainmail on top. You know. Oh, so you'd like fill it out? You'd look like a yeah, because that would that would like equate to like what like medium, I think. So, mm. but when you go into the inactive state, would you just be a clump? <laughs> no, you'd, you'd, <laughs> you'd like inflate when you active. <laughs> I, I love the idea of you just uh, like going to your inactive state and then waking up to some asshole trying to put you on. <laughs> Do I always love the idea of like, you know, Warforged and these having this inactive state and kind of giving them the same thing that gargoyles have where like if they remain motionless for a long period of time, they can't be distinguished from like a suit of armor. You know, that would be fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh. Uh... You just look like a like uh, a I'm still yeah. like, uh, I'm still stuck on the weld a chair to his back part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, platform like, saddles are a thing in arc. Why not? <laughs> well, it's like if you could if you could you know take advantage of the, the situation you got there, you know. And it doesn't say that it has to be uh, medium size, right? No, you could you could have your... you could have like large size armor. You could have barding for a horse. You could have. Yeah. <laughs> he could be a horse armor. It could oh, be well, horse yeah. armor. Here you are. Your size is medium. Your size is medium. Okay, so it does have a limitation there. Despite having the uh, heavy well, that makes... pony armor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. A mastiff. You can really flavor this to whatever. Uh, we did discuss one uh, very fun uh, thing to do with this uh, during the campaign you were playing that, yeah. and the whole party was getting together on this one. Mul- the concept of multiple people uh, getting together to make this happen. Uh, one person with uh, using like the the giant rune thing that makes you grow. Oh, it's like yeah. okay, you f- merge with the person that can use the rune knight shit to. Grow, go up a size class enlarge. then have another person uh, yeah <laughs> yes and then have another person slap and enlarge on top of that Jeez. and then like so multiple instances of enlarge okay. and then you other uh, characters that. like coming together you can't stack that <laughs> you you would create like a like a fucking you think gargantuan after like four freaking wizards got a hold of you yeah. Well, the, the idea is like it all. It with the party was working together so much on this. Megazord. I was like, okay, the concept that y'all are coming together to make a Megazord is fine in my book. I love and it. I <laughs> form the head. Yeah. Uh, oh, seriously! Like uh, the kobold wanted to get up on the shoulder and basically be uh, like a blaster cannon, because yeah, like <laughs> you know kobold wizard that can fly. It's like okay, uh, wizard shooting out a lightning bolt. Uh, we got uh, so you got your heavy wait, artillery wait, wait, wait. shoulder. You're you, shooting lightning bolts while standing on a metallic like, object. <laughs> we also had the idea. I don't judge. I don't judge. You know, using me as like a. What's what was the word? Like a fucking like a like a Trojan horse, you know. I walk up, they're <laughs> like, Oh shit, this big boy. Suddenly I open up and there's a wizard inside. Like <laughs> <laughs> but the You could like, be the Trojan like, horse. <laughs> like cast spells while wearing me and gaining like the benefits of it is like you're protected while inside Dude. and you can cast big spells. Oh man. You would drive the <laughs> druid insane. If you encased oh, yeah. a druid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Release me. <laughs> it's great. I love it. Shifting it to random animals. <laughs> it's like, I'm I'm becoming a freaking snake and I was crawling out of here. <laughs> Suddenly like a rhino horn pops out my chest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out. Oh, All right. That That's great. So, Ryan, what do so you do- got? Okay, I present to you uh, from uh, the Fluffy Folio. Check out their Patreon, guys. It's cool shit. Yeah, love, All day, every I day. Quick, I do want to say uh, shout out to Grey Pilgrim 33 for creating the Soulbound race. I don't think I give you your what? plug. I love it. <laughs> well, hey, it's in the description so people can check that out if they want to. And moving on to the Sword Sword. The Sword Sword. Yeah, the, the sword, sword. So, uh, still war. Uh, uh, well, 
I, I'm already failing at speaking. Stalwart, uh, courageous, and a little bit edgy. It may be tiny, but the sword, sword stands tall, unbroken. It fights those aggressively threatening its quest. It is the most adventurous among its kin. A crusader roaming through hostile lands and dangerous empires. Occasionally, the sharp-witted soldier bands up with daring adventures and offers its services to those deemed worthy enough. Being uh, swirled around, it's something. What, swirl, swirled around, it's something. What the fuck are you y'all writing over here? <laughs> The sword sword highly appreciates, but it will do as it must to repel the enemy. Sharp tongue. The sword, the sword sword is chivalrous and considers itself eloquent. <laughs> when speaking, it often uses uh, idioms, although some uh, would consider them to be cheap word puns uh, related to swords, blades, and sharp tools in general. Right. So it, it's a tiny construct sword that's like a it's a it's a warrior it has a sword in hand but it is a sword right right okay so it's a sword holding a sword <laughs> it's a hand and a half yes <laughs> all right got yeah it. <laughs> it's a c it's a cr one half it, <laughs> like, the, the stats are nothing uh, to write home about outside uh it's got a dex of 17 a con of 18 oh, e- everything else is pretty, good. pretty standard pretty strength good. is a four yeah, it, it, it's tiny because you know it, it's a sword, mm-hmm. like a toothpick. But it does have some, it, yeah, it, it does have some special traits. Uh, immutable form: the sword sword is immune to any spell or effect that would alter its form. Okay. False appearance: while the sword sword remains motionless and hides its uh, weapon, uh, it is indistinguishable from any ordinary sword. That's hilarious. I just love the Heart. idea of like you swing, <laughs> Mister. Like, ha, Miss Sword pulls out a knife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, what the? Oh my god! <laughs> you bring a sword thing, to a sword fight? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the, the sword brings a gun to a sword fight. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, the, the next trait it's got hard headed. A, a creature grappling the sword sword can use its bonus. Wait, a creature grappling the sword sword can use its bonus action to make a melee attack using a uh, damage dice of the sword sword's headbutt. The sword sword is considered a long sword for the attack. Uh, only a target other than the sword sword can uh, be attacked in this way. If the attack hits the target, the sword sword can use its reaction to make a melee attack against the target with with its pesky sword. So you could you could pick it up to attack somebody, and then it's like I'm stabbing too, and it just like jabs them <laughs> in the thumb. <laughs> It makes me think of what was that uh, that Borderlands character shooting McShoot face or whatever. Like, <laughs> Come on, please shoot me in the face. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's got multi attack. Its headbutt is exactly what you think it is. It's doing slashing damage by trying to stab somebody with its head, which right. is the blade. Pesky sword is its little tiny sword where it does a D4 plus three. So it's like fighting with a toothpick. Right, right. And its reaction is a parry. So it can add two to its AC against one melee attack that would hit it. Uh, to do so, the sword must uh, see the attacker and be wielding a melee weapon. Interesting. It's sword. <laughs> 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 this thing is it, it's kind of cute it's, and you can make it look like whatever you want as far as swords go is it, is it it's like t- yes ah amazing it, it's a it's a it's a tiny construct and lawful neutral <laughs> just a, a little sword running around with its own sword and oh. shield T- take me seriously I love that. I love when things like have personalities and like they're always like. No, it, it, it's Clippy. It's the Clippy of freaking D and D. It comes up and asks you. It looks like you're trying to stab someone. How can I help? Oh yes, it is Sword Clippy. I always just love when like inanimate objects just have a. Desire to stab things. <laughs> I mean, it has to have anime Dude. eyes and like a, a a little like scrawled grin on its face. It's like, yes, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm looking at stabbing someone, but let me click you off. <laughs> ah, dude, I love this thing. It, it's adorable. It's great. It's, uh, what's the rarity? It, uh, it, there is no rarity. It's not an item. It's a construct. Yeah. Oh, right. It's a construct. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. It's a CR one half. So yeah, it's just like yeah. yeah it's uh, uh, fluffy folio so does these me great is, little. Uh, this is great little monsters. Familiar. Just like the, the <laughs> plants, the little sproutlings. It's, it's, they got great stuff, man. CR one halves can be familiars, can't they? <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? If your DM's cool with it, have a hex blade warlock <laughs> with a pet with a pack of the tome. Yes, pack of the blade. <laughs> uh, oh no, yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, pack to the tome because. Oh wait, is it the tome? Or pack to the chain. Pack to the chain warlock is the one that gets the buffs for the familiar. So yeah. like you you you're out here with your little familiar and your familiar is a sword. Oh my god. And then your familiar can get a familiar, which is also a sword with a sword, <laughs> and you start the thing. It's a fractal sword. <laughs> Imagine fighting an army of these. Oh my god. Every sword has a sword with a sword? Holy shit. It'd be like Disney's <laughs> Fantasia. You know, ah, <laughs> yes. Dun, 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 One dun, attack dun, 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 four times. It's amazing. <laughs> you go into a situation and it's straight Fantasia, like a you you know parties marching along, and you look over to the uh, distance and you see uh, what looks like a bunch of just uh, pointy objects in the distance that glinting off the sun. <laughs> As you approach closer, you find that these objects just seem to be a bunch of swords just kind of bouncing along the road. Uh, uh, As you uh, edge even closer you see that these swords have swords in tiny hands <laughs> and little boots marching in lockstep across the road oh God. A million with, with, blades. with one rather ornate sword in the front leading the charge <laughs> holding a two attention holding a hammer face <laughs> Oh no, oh, this is going to be so abuse. Charge! I could so abuse this. this that's not a lawn. Oh, good. That is an army. <laughs> <laughs> Every blade of grass blade, sir. Artificer just got lost in the sauce and couldn't stop making it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they needed uh, a cantrip like for a really good copy. What can I say? <laughs> 10 out of 10. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely a, a great place to kind of uh, wrap up the show for the night. Uh, so, Mark, where can people find you? I'm on anything that says hashtag Gnome Depot, but uh, you can find me on <laughs> as the Gnome Depot on Twitter. I'm uh, underscore Gnome Depot underscore at, on Instagram. Uh I think I'm straight mm. Gnome Depot on on uh, TikTok. It's I'm all over. Yeah, the I remember. I'm on, uh, I'm on Blue I, Sky. I remember first coming across your stuff on uh, Reddit. Yeah, I, I have my own little thing on Reddit. That's it's just basically everything I got is uh, on Reddit because they I was <clears> making too many for to do on uh, D and D memes. They just didn't like me after a while. <laughs> He can't be contained, people. Check out the Gnome Depot anywhere Gnome Depots are sold. <laughs> Hashtag Gnome Depot and you'll find my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> right, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. You, you've been great. It was great having right. you. Nice to meet you. All right. Well, everybody, y'all have a great weekend and we look forward to next week. Hell yeah. Mm. All right, and we are clear.